Now, this video is basically based on another accounting standard on the non-current assets and the accounting standard name is non-current assets held for sale and discontinued operations. Now, basically, which kind of non-current assets will be considered in this particular accounting standard and would fall within the scope of this accounting standard? These are basically those non-current assets which now will not be used within the organization and their economic benefits will primarily be recovered by selling these assets. So these type of non-current assets will be considered as my non-current assets held for sale. Now it can be an individual asset or it can be a group of assets. So if it is a group of assets, it will be considered as a disposal group or if it is an individual asset, it will be simply considered as non-current assets held for sale. But it's not like that you can simply consider an asset as held for sale. If you want to simply sell that asset, that's not enough for you to classify it as non-current asset held for sale. There's a two point criteria. Number one, as you can mention, as you can see on the screen, the asset should be available for sale in its current condition, which means that if you think that I need, like, for example, let's say I have a property. So if you think that I will be doing some repairs on the property, I need to repaint the property. And if today any buyer comes to me and wants to get the building today or the property today, I will not be able to transfer the property to him at this very point. So in this situation, it will not be considered as available for sale in its current condition. So if it is not available for sale in its current condition, then in that particular point, you cannot consider it as non-current asset held for sale. So it means that it should be readily available for sale the very moment any buyer is willing to buy it today. That's the first thing. And the second thing is the sale should be highly probable. Now, how to quantify that? So as you can see on the screen, there's a mnemonic, PUMAS. So you can easily remember the criteria with this mnemonic by saying this thing that the price should be based on the fair value, which means that it should be near to the fair value, equal to the fair value or like small adjustments to the fair value, but it should be a fair price. It should not be something uh, or it should not be a price at which it is very difficult for the transaction to close. It is unlikely that the plan will be changed. The management will not be changing the plan. The management will not be backing out from the plan. The management has a firm commitment to the plan, which takes us to the third point that the management should be committed to the plan. They do not have any um, intention to back out from the plan. There is a firm commitment by the organization's management. The management is also actively looking for a buyer. So they are putting ads in the newspaper, they're putting ads over the internet, they're looking for the buyer, they're negotiating with the buyers, they're getting different quotations from the buyers. So all this process should be taking place. And of course, the sale is expected to happen within one year or it's expected to take place within one year. Now it's not necessary that all the time you would be able to make the sale within one year. So it's very simple. If you are able to make the sale, then of course, it's considered as non-current asset held for sale. But if you are not, you need to con consider two things. If the sale was not able to take place because, because of some uncontrollable factors, then you can still continue to consider it as held for sale if you still wish to sell the asset. But if it was due to some controllable factors, like for example, the management themselves were laid back and they were not negotiating well or they were not putting their effort to sell the asset, then you have to revert back to its original accounting, whatever accounting you were following. Let's say, for example, you were following IAS 16, property plant and equipment. Now, the moment any non-current asset is considered as held for sale, the asset should be recorded at the lower of its carrying amount and the fair value minus cost to sell. So if the fair value minus cost to sell is less than the carrying amount, then there will definitely be some impairment and that impairment will be recorded in my profit and loss. And since now it will not be used by the company and it will be sold in the market. So no further depreciation will be charged on these non-current assets held for sale. The other part 
of this accounting standard is mainly related to the presentation of the financial statements which is the discontinued operation so if you are discontinuing a part of your organization which is largely independent it is representing a separate geographical location a separate sector of the business a subsidiary of the business so this kind of operation if you are discontinuing that that would meet the definition of discontinuing operation so if you are discontinuing any of your part of the operations of the business that needs to be reflected separately in your financial statements specifically in your statement of profit and loss so now when i will be preparing my income statement now how do we prepare the income statement we start with the revenue the cost of sales the gross profit and other expenses and then we keep on following that until the profit for the year now what we have to do over here is the same income statement will be prepared but at the inception of the in income statement at the start of the income statement i will write down continuing operations which means that first of all i will give the heading continuing operation make the income statement normally revenue cost of sales gross profit and reach at the profit figure but this profit will only be from continuing operations once i have got the profit from the continuing operations then i am going to give another heading after the profit from continuing operation and the heading will be discontinuing operation now you do not have to prepare the whole income statement again for the discontinued part just write down one line profit from discontinued operation or loss from discontinued operation you do not have to do the complete working again for the discontinued part the working of that will be in your notes to the financial statement right so basically it will be the accounting standard of the non current assets held for sale and discontinued operation the main working that we have is from the held for sale part the discontinued operation is just the part of the presentation in your income statement and will be separately presented in your pnl right so this is another short video on the accounting standard ifrs 5 non current assets held for sale thank you very much